Welcome back everybody. Hope you're doing well. Today we're making a super simple low cost CO2 system again. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you might have seen me make one of these systems already. But this one's going to be a little bit different because we're going to use it for our substrate experiment. And here we have six different compartments. So we need six diffusers as well. So this one is going to be interesting. Let's see if we can pull it off. Yeah, so I think it's been roughly two weeks since I did an update on this experiment. So we have six different compartments all with a different substrate. It's now been up and running for well over a month. And it was basically really quite obvious that substrate number six, the uh, pond soil top with tropical powder soil, gave us the best or the fastest plant growth. And substrate number two, the fluval stratum, basically gave us the least amount of algae growth. So in that video, I asked you guys, what should we do next? Should we keep this experiment going or should we start a new experiment? And I think 80 or 90% of the comments all said to keep this experiment going. And also a lot of people said to add CO2 to this experiment because right now, it's just very low tech. We don't even have a filter. We don't have CO2. It's just substrate, water, and light. Yeah, I think adding CO2 can definitely make this experiment a bit more interesting as well. In the previous video, we also did some tests for like nitrate and phosphate. And that showed that some of these sub substrates, for example, the aquarine neosol, has a ton of nutrients, while the fluval stratum has very low nutrients. So I can imagine that once we start adding CO2 in here, the fluval stratum will show nutrient deficiencies faster than the aquarine neosol. Yeah, how do you go about adding CO2 to six different tanks? I think for that you actually need a regulator with like six separate manifolds so you can control the CO2 individually or you need to buy like a splitter. But all those things are fairly expensive. I think it's more fun to just make something ourselves. So I think I basically have everything I need for this little DIY project. I'm going to make two separate CO CO2 systems. So I found two bottles. These are both two liters each. Then we have sugar, we have baking soda, we have yeast, we have a screwdriver. We have liquid superglue, a bunch of tubing, a bunch of CO2 diffusers, some suction cups. And lastly, I bought these things, pneumatic quick connectors. I have to give credit for those quick connectors because I didn't come up with this idea myself. Basically, a few months ago, I tried to make this really massive DOI CO2 system for the big shallow. The whole experiment didn't go well. Basically, the <laughs> CO2 bottle exploded, so do not uh, recommend doing that. But in that video, or underneath the video, somebody commented saying that I should use pneumatic quick connectors and use multiple bottles. So that's where I got the idea from. So if you're watching, thanks a lot. Okay, I'm going to keep this one quite simple. I'm just going to fill each bottle with 500 grams of sugar. Normally, I would first boil the sugar with water and add gelatin as well. So we basically have like a set jelly underneath in each bottle. But that basically makes the process last longer and make it more stable. This time, I don't really care about that. I just want more power because we need to power three CO2 diffusers. So we need a lot of uh, CO2 to be produced. So I'm just gonna fill each bottle with 500 grams of sugar and then I'll show you guys the next step in the process. Okay, so the sugar is in. So I'm now gonna fill each bottle with water. I think roughly a liter to one and a half liters, just to about somewhere over there. And I want this water to be not too hot and not too cold either because in a minute we're gonna add yeast to these bottles as well. And the yeast just doesn't really work properly when it's too cold. And when it's too hot, too hot, you can actually kill these as well. So this water is now 30 degrees. And I'm going to make sure it's the same temperature for this bottle as well. So we, we get the exact same results, you know. Okay, so we have the sugar, we have the water. And then the last step is the yeast. So the yeast is going to consume the sugar. In the process, it will make alcohol. And a byproduct of that process is CO2. I want to make sure we add the same amount of yeast to each bottle. So I'm just going to use like a like a teaspoon it doesn't really matter that much how much yeast you add because it will start multiplying anyway and at some point you just end up with a load of yeast so these bottles are now prepared these will take a few hours before they start producing co2 so in the meantime we can start working on the lids the co2 tubing the diffusers and that's it basically basically super simple okay so let's work on these lids this is the most difficult part but in reality it's actually very simple the most important thing is that this whole thing is of course airtight because we need pressure because without pressure we cannot get any CO2 through our diffusers. So I'm going to make a very tiny hole in these caps and you can just use a drill if you like. I actually just like to warm up a screwdriver and just puncture a hole in the lid. That's it. Okay, so we've got a hole in our cap. One thing I forgot to mention is that you want this hole to be either the exact same diameter or a little bit smaller as your CO2 tubing, just so it creates a tight seal, you know, just like that. If this hole will be much bigger than the diameter of the tubing, 
you would have a large gap here and then it will be much more difficult to make the whole thing airtight. So right now we're good. But this is still not completely airtight because once pressure is going to start building up, it can still start leaking some gas all around here. So we're going to need to close this all up with super glue. So I was watching some YouTube videos yesterday and this random video popped up about how you can make super strong bonds with super glue and baking soda. I was already using super glue, but I've never used a combination with baking soda. So let's just give it a try. I'm just going to add a little bit of around the CO2 tubing. And then normally I would really have to wait until this cures basically, but I think if we just add some baking soda, sprinkle it on top, and then we'll do a little bit more super glue. Okay, that's it. Definitely a lot quicker because of the baking soda, it just instantly sets the, uh, the super glue. Now there's not really a way to tell if it's actually airtight. We just have to uh, put the whole thing together and just test it out. So let me just do the other cap and then we can uh, continue with the process. Okay, never mind that. That didn't really work because I think the bottle caps are a bit too smooth. The surface is too smooth. So the glue actually didn't really, yeah, attached properly. So I'm gonna like take a little bit of sanding paper, roughen up the surface a little bit and then try again. Okay, I think that worked uh, better. I think we have a better seal now. We can move on to the CO2 diffusers. I'm actually surprised I managed to find six of the same. So let's just go with three first. Okay, so now we have three CO2 diffusers. So that's for one aquarium. So we can connect all these with the pneumatic quick connectors. So I hope that these quick connectors are completely airtight as well. I'm not exactly sure, but it should be, right? So basically this is the whole thing. Here we will have our bottle, CO2 will flow from here to our quick connector, and there it should be divided to all three CO2 diffusers. I'm not sure if it's going to be completely airtight. I'm not sure if every diffuser is going to get the same amount of CO2. That's just going to be, uh, yeah, we just have to find that out. Here we go, three diffusers there and three diffusers there. I've placed the diffusers as close to the substrate as possible because of course we don't have any flow in these compartments. We want to, the CO2 to stay in contact with the water column for as long as possible. Bottles are underneath as well. Actually one was still giving me some issues. This, this one just didn't, yeah, didn't make a good seal. So I just replaced it with a cap that I already had lying around. So if you want to do this yourself, just make sure that you do this part properly. Yeah, I think that's it. Now we'll just uh, wait for the pressure in the CO2 bottles to build up. And I guess we'll come back tomorrow. Okay, so now the next day. Good news. Both CO2 systems are up and running. Just not really quite how I want it to be. Yeah, so I kind of knew that this would happen, but we're not getting equal amounts of CO2 from every diffuser. So this one on the left is producing a lot of CO2. The one in the middle, a little bit less. And the one on the right, basically barely anything. Uh, same on this side. Here we have the one in the middle that's producing a lot of CO2. Uh, the one on the right is producing just a little bit and on the left I can barely see anything. Another issue of course is that we don't have any flow in this compartment so all the CO2 bubbles are going straight towards the surface. So I'm not sure how much CO2 is actually being absorbed in the water and how much we're actually raising the CO2 levels in these compartments. So we need a little solution for that. I think I came up with something good. Um, I did a little bit more DIYing. Uh, what I have here is a plastic lid from a tissue culture cup that I've glued to a small stick and I've glued that on top of a suction cup. So what I'm planning to do is attach these above the CO2 diffusers. So all the CO2 will rise to this uh, plastic lid and will basically form a big bubble here. And that bubble will stay in contact with the water for a long time. And I've made six of these, so every compartment will get one. So then we'll basically have the exact same amount of CO2 in each compartment because every bubble or every compartment has the same size bubble basically. Some in some compartments this bubble will fill up faster than in other compartments, but that doesn't really matter that much. So I think I want to try this, see if that works, and uh, we'll come back in a few hours again.
Okay, it's now the next day again, and this is exactly what I had in mind, guys. So that plastic lid is now completely filled with CO2 gas. The CO2 drop checker is completely yellow. So I, guess it, I guess it's a good thing that we don't have any livestock in these compartments because they'll probably not be very happy by now. The thing is though that it's not the same in all compartments. So this one in the middle, yeah, you can see from the top, see the ga gas bubble there is just a lot smaller. And that one we don't have anything at all. And on this side it's a bit different as well. So in this compartment it's empty. Here it's halfway filled and here is halfway filled as well. So we're definitely raising the CO2 levels in all these compartments, just not at the same level or the same quantity. So I think that kind of defeats the purpose of this experiment because we want the conditions in each compartment to be exactly the same. Otherwise the results are not really fair, you know? So I think this was a fun little DIY experiment, but I think we have to go back to the drawing board and figure out something else. Maybe I just have to make six separate bottles and each uh, compartment will just get its own CO2 bottle. Maybe you guys have some suggestions as well, but yeah, let me know in the comments. I think that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.